Hi, this is Pastor Marty with a special edition of the Afternoon Drive here on YouTube. Well, in less than 24 hours, two shootings across the nation have obviously shaken the nation. We are sickened by the actions of these individuals. The one in El Paso, Texas, is now being deemed as domestic terrorism. Over 20 people dead, another 25, 26 that are injured, and then Canton, Ohio, the police responded in less than a minute and took that guy down and out completely. But yet, the Democrats have wasted no time at politicizing this and, of course, laying the blame at the feet of President Donald Trump. You see a, a president who, in, in his first speech as a candidate for the highest office in the land, described Mexican immigrants as, as rapists and criminals, has been warning about the threats uh, of caravans and asylum seekers who he's described as animals and, and an infestation, despite the fact that immigrants commit crimes at a far lower rate than do those who are born in this country, despite the fact that we are now in one of the safest cities in the United States of America, safe not despite but because it is a city of immigrants the president's language his rhetoric has produced the kinds of hate crimes that we saw in el paso yesterday but we've been seeing across this country they've been on the rise for each one of the last three years so we cannot act as though this were just some kind of natural disaster or a matter of course for this country or the new normal for the united states there is a very real cause to this, and, and President Trump is part of that, but he exists in, in a racist environment that is being fueled by, by Fox News, by those who on the internet traffic in these conspiracy theories, uh, the open hatred and intolerance that has found a home in people like the shooter and, and what he did yesterday. That's a low shot even for Beto the fake Latino. Can you imagine, actually, you're going to lay the blame at this at President Trump's feet, you're going to say that he's created this culture of hatred, he's created this bigotry, this white supremacy, give me a break. First of all, let's take a look at this. And normally I don't comment on developing news stories like this because it's still too fresh. We are being spoon-fed very little information right now, and the little information that we have out there on this gunman in El Paso you know, 21-year-old kid that lived in Dallas, drove 650 miles to what? Take out Mexicans who are here, obviously, illegally. you got the president of Mexico chiming in. You've got a bunch of, uh, obviously, very scared Hispanic Americans, but yet they have allowed now common sense, logic, and reason to go out the window, and they're acting strictly on emotion, and I'm sorry, I'm going to say it, there's something that doesn't smack true about all this. Ooh, there, I said it. Supposedly, Google, which owns YouTube, as well as Twitter, have worked with the FBI and officials to take down the guy's social media sites so that none of his stuff can be copied and shared, even though he only had six friends on Facebook but yet CNN seems to have access to all this stuff as they spoon-feed it to the public, but nobody can actually go there to see if what CNN is reporting was actually there. And again, he's being portrayed as he was pro-Trump, anti-immigrant, pro-wall, that was the only way we were going to save America, posted up disparaging memes against Nancy Pelosi, and Bernie Sanders, well, gee, doesn't that just about describe anybody and everybody who isn't for the Democratic agenda going into 2020? That we post up comments and memes about Nancy Pelosi, Bernie Sanders, etc. This is just looking a little way too cut and dried, lining up with the stereotype, here we go, loner, angry, white supremacist, and had access to guns. So it's the NRA's fault. It's Donald Trump's fault. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this because, again, the investigation is still fresh. But I have to tell you that I, I listening to this, I'm watching this, and, again, 
This narrative seems almost too perfect. And again, it follows on the heels, much like it did in the 2018 election cycle, that after the president had had a run where he got Judge Kavanaugh confirmed to the Supreme Court, and he was being demagogued by the Democrats, but yet the president was holding his own and gaining ground, all of a sudden, Democrats just start magically getting bombs in the mail from a Trump supporter a guy driving around in a Trump van. And again, we were spoon-fed information. Now all of a sudden, after the president's had several good weeks, the Mueller implosion has totally now derailed and destroyed the Democratic wet dream of impeachment. Now in 24 hours, we have two shootings. Now obviously, as an American, this sickens me. And I am saddened as a, as a pastor... As a fellow human being, I am saddened for the families that have lost loved ones who are grieving. The loss and the tragedy of this is very, very real. The setup, the buildup, the information coming forward. Right now, I'm just telling you, it seems a little too contrived, a little too staged, and again, the timing. As the news and the events have been bending in the Trump direction, as the Democrats are set to absolutely implode going into the 2020 election cycle where they can't seem to muster anyone that's sane that could actually go up against the president in a reasonable campaign, They just keep drifting further and further left, even eating their own now, and disparaging the precious Barack Obama. Poof! Here comes a tragic shooting. A bullying of Republicans and the president to quickly sign a piece of paper, make a law happen that will end this. If there was a weapon that killed 3,287 people every single day in this country, would we ban it? If it led to, on an average of 1.3 million deaths per year, and maimed or disabled or injured 50 to 60 million more people, in a year. Would we outlaw it? Would we outlaw the weapon known as the automobile? Yes, it's tragic that 20 people needlessly lost their lives in Walmart in El Paso, Texas. They will never again walk through the doors of their home, hug their loved ones, be loved by their loved ones. What about the 3,200 people, nearly 3,300 people who won't return home tomorrow because of an auto accident. The 1.3 million lives that will be lost to auto accidents this year. To put that in perspective, that's 1.3 million auto deaths per year. There are 1.5 million gun deaths on the record. Not for this year. Not for last year. You have to go all the way back to 1968 to now to have 1.5 million total deaths. 50 years. And the stats that the Democrats don't give you that the Beto O'Rourke, the Irish Latino, that booty a gig, who again blaming President Trump for this. The stats that they don't tell you is that in most of these gun fatalities, it's crime related. In other words, thugs killing other thugs or police officers killing thugs. So this idea 
that we live in open, wanton, like the Wild West, people can't even walk into a Walmart, as tragic as this is, over 3,000 people will die today because they got in their car and they won't return home. And by the way, 3,000 more will die tomorrow and the day after and the day after and the day after and the day after. Yet, CNN's not going to cover it. PMSNBC won't make a mention of it. Nobody's face will be plastered on the evening news unless it's like a 50-car pileup in a freak accident. So we need a little perspective. We need a moment here to collect thoughts and to find out exactly who this individual is. Because again, you never can trust the first facts that come out. And again, I'm sorry, I have questions. This timing of this and the spoon-fed, nearly stereotypical spin that we are getting as to who this individual is and why he did this and what the motivation was, it seems a little bit way too contrived for me. So what I'm going to do is sit back, withhold any judgment, and wait for facts to come out. That would be a good idea for the Democrats to do. But then again, they're really not interested in facts. Only propaganda, ways to stir up people to hate this president so that they can buy votes. Oh, and by the way, erode your constitutional rights. That's it for tonight's rant. Make sure that you have subscribed to the channel. Give us a thumbs up, a like if you agree with what we said here. Share this and make sure you've smacked the bell for my next rant.